Hey guys, I'm Evan Thorpe. This is Michelle Martinelli back in studio, and this is For the Wins College Football Breakdown. And Michelle, it is championship week. We are ready for some big games that will have huge playoff implications. But let's just kind of review what happened last week for the teams who pretty much don't have to worry about this weekend. Notre Dame finished off their regular season undefeated, beating USC 24-17. And at 12-0, you got to think with no championship game, Notre Dame is a lock to get in, right? Yes. Uh, at this point, absolutely. ESPN's college football playoff predictor gives them a greater than a 99% chance of making the playoff at this point. They don't have a game this weekend, so they don't risk a loss. Uh, this is as close as we're going to get to a guarantee. Uh, they just got to sit back and wait and see who the other three teams are. Another team that went undefeated this year so far, Clemson, and they're going into the ACC championship game against Pitt. And they're a huge favorite right now. Are they a lot to get in? I think so, only in only because Clemson has handled solidly just about every other ACC opponent. It's come across. Conference isn't very strong. That's not Clemson's fault. Um, so coming off a 56-35 win over South Carolina this past weekend, Clemson is still undefeated, and I think it takes care of Pitt and walks right into the playoff too. And the number one team in the nation, Alabama, continued their dominance of college football, just ruined it for everybody. They are undefeated heading to the SEC championship game, but win or loss, is Alabama a lock to get in? Yeah, this is where I think the situation really gets interesting. I think Alabama is the only team playing this weekend who could afford to lose and still make the college football playoff. Mm -hmm. um, according to ESPN Analytics, if Georgia wins the SEC championship game and hands Alabama its first loss, the Crimson Tides still have a 43% chance of making it into the playoff. Um, all that means is that chances are Georgia's joining them too. All right, so looking into that final spot since we pretty much have three spots almost guaranteed. That last spot, and we're going to start off with Georgia. Mm -hmm. They play against Alabama in the SEC championship game, which we've known for about a month now. <laughs> but if you're Georgia, what can you do or what happens if you win this? So I think there is a little bit of an advantage for Georgia that they have known for several weeks that they will have to play Alabama at mm -hmm. the end of the tunnel, and chances are they would have to beat them to make the playoff, right? If Georgia wins, Georgia's in. Yeah. I think it's going to be really hard to say no to a one-loss SEC champion mm -hmm. when you became that champion by upsetting the best team in the country. Right. I think it's going to be really hard to say no. What that means is that then you're going to have two SEC teams in the four-team playoff. Yeah, like we saw last year, Alabama didn't get into the SEC championship game, and the committee just felt like they were too strong of a team to let out opposed to a one-loss con one conference champion. Mm -hmm. uh, next up, we have another team that's right on the edge, Oklahoma. They go off against Texas, and this Texas team beat them early in the year. Mm -hmm. And is it possible we can see another upset? I think it is. I think there's two ways to look at this, that either Oklahoma, that's Oklahoma's only loss so far this season, they take a look at that game footage and break down what what went wrong, where they can improve, and they move on from this. They, uh, they build upon their mistakes and turn them away this time. But on the other hand, Texas perhaps has a blueprint mm -hmm. for now how to beat Oklahoma, um, the top ranked team in the Big 12 at the moment. Um, so I, I, think, I feel like this game could go either way, but I, I'm inclined to give the edge to Oklahoma, learning from their mistakes. They only lost to Texas by a field goal. Mm -hmm. So, like, this is this is a close game, but I think this is where they, they beat Texas. All right, and even if they win, it's still not a 100% guarantee because the team we're about to talk about still has a chance. And Ohio State kept their playoff hopes alive with the crushing of Michigan at home. And we talked about how big of a game it would be no matter what happened. And mm -hmm. if you're Ohio State, right. you had that ugly loss at the beginning of the year and very close games leading up to it. But they took care of business, beating Michigan 62-39. And they faced Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship. <laughs> I don't think anybody had Northwestern going to the Big Ten Championship. And how did they get here? Now, if you had Northwestern in the Big Ten Championship, you are lying. Yeah. <laughs> um, Northwestern, yeah, this is their first uh, conference championship game appearance. Um, and they're having, they're playing well. Mm -hmm. um, they're 8-4 and four overall, 8-1 and one in the Big Ten but a lot of it is they're here by default. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone expected Wisconsin to be as sketchy as they are this season. I don't think 
anyone expected Iowa to be as inconsistent as it is. We thought maybe Nebraska would have some struggles with new coach Scott Frost coming in, but I don't think anyone thought it was going to take weeks for them to win their first game. So that's just Northwestern's emerging as the best in the Big Ten West. Well, I don't know about you. I have Ohio State winning this one. And let's talk about the scenarios of what happens if X team win or if this team loses because that fourth seat is still up for grabs. And what do you think? How do you think it all plays out? I think Georgia loses to Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, it, even if it's close, I, I don't think a two-loss Georgia team is getting in over a one-loss conference champion from either the Big Ten or the Big 12. Um, but I do think both Oklahoma and Ohio State end up winning this. Yes. Ohio State is the interesting one. If Ohio State plays the way it did against Michigan, it's going to beat Northwestern no problem. If Ohio State plays the way it's been playing the last few weeks going into the Michigan game, I think there are some questions there. Northwestern might be able to pull off the upset, and then the Big Ten's going to shut itself out of the playoff. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think Ohio State comes out with this, and Oklahoma comes out too. You have two one-loss conference champions. All right, so I think Ohio State resume will put them over Oklahoma, but you think Oklahoma has the better chance to get in. Yeah, if they're both one-loss conference champions and assuming Georgia loses, mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, Oklahoma has had a solid season, right? Um, they, this will be, even though they're playing Texas for a second time, this will be technically their third game against our ranked opponent. Um, they, like we said, the margin against Texas and the loss previously wasn't very big. Um, you can make the argument that a few teams in the Big 12 and on Oklahoma's schedule aren't that strong, but I think the same can easily be made about the Big 10 as well. Um, plus, you know, there's a chance that all the hype around Kyler Murray, um, you know, gives them a little bit of an extra boost. Well, I think if you're Ohio State, you have four ranked teams that you win against this year and one against, and then Northwestern would be the fifth. If you win that, that's five ranked wins. If you look at that Purdue loss, on paper, it looks really bad, but if you look more into it, Purdue had three wins against ranked teams and they're going to a bowl win. And you think about that last time we saw them, they destroyed the number one defense. And if they destroy Northwestern, you got to look at them with a different eye. And not the eye that we looked at in the past because the college football committee is more of a what have you done for me mm -hmm. now. And that'll be two huge wins, blowout wins against two ranked teams. Yeah, uh, I think this selection committee tends to have a short memory, and obviously that win against Michigan is a huge advantage for Ohio State mm -hmm. at this point. Um, I still just think a 29-point loss to Purdue, if you look at that, a 6-6 six and six Purdue team is worse than a three-point loss to the team you're playing against in the conference championship game. All right, what about UCF? I don't think so. <laughs> and we, we said it before, I'm going to say it again. UCF has a less than 1% chance of making the playoff. The Knights have got to put more challenging games on their schedule and win them before the playoff committee will take them seriously. All right, guys, for Michelle Martinelli, I'm Evan Thorpe. Thank you guys for watching and tune in next week as we discuss the finalists for the Heisman Trophy. See you next week.